Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well, it's Christmas 2022 as I film this and it is the season to be jolly and it is time for perhaps a little bit of Christmas fun. But Christmas is always, um, I, I, I greet Christmas with a bit of uh, mixed feelings to be quite honest. And there are days when I think about Christmas approaching fast and I think it's all a humbug! A humbug! Oh, tis the season to be jolly. Is it really? Well, yes. Before you start to think I'm a Grinch and I don't like Christmas, I'm miserable. I do like all those things about Christmas that everybody likes. But for me, as a modeler, it's a two-sided coin. It's like Yannis, the two-sided, two two-faced monster. On the one hand, often at Christmas I get given models as gifts, which is absolutely fantastic, or model-related things. But before I can get there, before I can reach that goal, something has to be done, which I absolutely detest. Can you guess what it is? I've got to dust and clean all my models and my many, many modelling cabinets. Every year, what have I done to deserve this? Every year I have this thing where I put it off and I put it off and I put it off. And then it gets nearer and nearer. And before you know it, it's the week before Christmas. And it's quite true. I mean, obviously I've got one of my cabinets here. I've actually got two cabinets like this. I'm thinking of getting a third in the not too distant future. because I, I need a third, actually. But it's a bit of a problem, to be honest. Um, and what normally happens, quite seriously, is... I get to Christmas Eve and I have this tradition, I put on, this is a very strange tradition, I put on the Beatles film, Help, from 1965, I think it is, um, and I watch that uh, as I do this job, and it takes quite a few hours, so each cabinet takes about two to two and a half hours to, well, what I have to do is take out all the models, I've got to then uh, put them somewhere safe. Then I actually dust the models uh, in a separate room normally. And then I have to dust out the cabinet and then finally wipe all the glass because there's a lot of glass and it really does show every mark. So, so it attracts the dust like a magnet. Um, the, the lights, you know, you, you dust it and you think, oh, I've done a great job. And then you just realise you haven't dusted it or you haven't wiped it enough, the glass. And there's still dust in there that starts to reaccumulate. Or there are marks on the glass. And, and this can go on for hours. I mean, I've had one year, about four or five years ago, when it took most of Christmas Eve to do this. Now, this doesn't go down very well when my wife is doing her level best to prepare food. And she does these... Um, I'm going to give her a plug here. She does cook the most wonderful... Sausage rolls with very light pastry that just melt in your mouth. Oh, they're wonderful. Um, it's with a spicy sausage meat that's uh, Cumberland Chipolata based from Sainsbury's if you're interested, folks. Get their Cumberland Chipolatas and take the skin off. It makes great sausage rolls. But anyway, and she also does um, beautiful shoe pastry, uh, very light little small eclairs, chocolate eclairs with fresh cream in and uh, real chocolate on the top. And they're only small, they're only about so big. And again, they melt in your mouth. They're absolutely fantastic. So she's busy doing all this and getting turkey ready or whatever we're having for Christmas Day. And I'm faffing about because I've left this job to the bitter last moment. And it has to be done because when you look at the... It's actually, it doesn't actually look quite that bad this time. But normally, I think it's because I did it in June. I had a little bit of a clean-up because I, was, I did some photography on one of my other videos that you'll have all seen. Where I produced several kits. And I think because of that, I sort of cleaned as I went, and so they're not quite as extremely knee-deep in, almost knee-deep in dust as they usually are. Um, so, as I say, I usually end up doing this, and I've, I've been doing it late on Christmas Eve sometimes, and it's just crazy, it takes over Christmas Eve, and it spoils Christmas. So, I'm doing it slightly earlier this year, uh, you're seeing this video probably at around that time, I think, maybe the day before Christmas Eve or thereabouts, or just after Christmas Day probably. Um, I'm going to film this in two parts. I'm going to show you before and after. Um, although I must admit, as I say, it's not as dramatic as it usually is because sometimes it looks absolutely tragic, but they, neither of them look quite that bad this time. I um, don't know whether that's because we had this hot weather this year or what it is. But anyway, in the meantime, we're going to, um, going to talk about that. I'm going to show you the, the models in the cabinet, show you what the problem is. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm not going to actually film myself just cleaning everything. I use a little blow brush, like a puffer brush, like using photography, to actually to go on the delicate pieces like the uh, you know the military figures, for example. Which are, I've got lots of those, even the 48 scale ones that are quite small. So there's yeah, there's a lot of little pieces, and it's the biggest challenge is is not the cleaning and the dusting. The biggest challenge is not taking too long in putting them back because if you do take too long then you just reacquire more dust and you look at the end and think well it looks not as bad but not that great at the end so you've got to kind of do it swiftly but you can't be moving around generating dust movement you've got i've got to sort of tippy toe around and ah, it becomes a nightmare anyway we'll get into that in a minute well, we're also going to be Having a Christmas drink. Uh, I wish you all very, very Merry Christmas for 2022. All the best to you. I'm going to have a little sip of this and I'll tell you about it in a second. Mm. Now, many of you know I'm famed for my expensive taste. Things like champagne, Grand Cru, Santa Million, red wine, etc, etc. Um, basically, I like to... Um, try good stuff, you know, and that, and that includes, we've talked about this before, but cigars, like a Christmas cigar, I'm not going to smoke it today, but I'll tell you about this one as well. Um, but I'm starting today with something that, that everybody can afford. Uh, I've gone back to basics with my drink today. You're going to laugh, but this is actually something I haven't had for ages and ages. It's actually Pierce Porter Mitchellsburg from Germany, from the Moselle Valley, which... We all used to drink in the 80s and the early 90s like it was water, you know, this was probably the first wine I used to drink. It's very light, a little bit sweet, very drinkable and it's low in alcohol, it's, well, relatively low, it's 9%. It's something you could actually have a couple of those and probably still drive, I wouldn't advocate it, but it is low, it is low. Um, and it's quite, quite a light wine, it's actually quite a summery wine to be honest, it's something you'd enjoy as a cool drink on a, you know, with a barbecue or something, but anyway. So that we're going back to basics and that cost five pounds a bottle from Sainsbury's, would you believe? So that was an absolute bargain. Um, and uh, I did try to get some last week, couldn't get any, and we just happened to get some yesterday. So got a couple of bottles of that for Christmas. It's very pleasant, chilled, light wine. I mean, when you're working, as I'm going to be doing, but yes, I've got the gloves on because I'm just about to handle these now. I'll show you in a second. I'll go behind the camera while I have a close look at them. Um, but I've got some very, very highly finished racing cars and things and we can't be touching them with the finger marks. So, Hence the gloves are on. So everything you expect from me except the location. This is my living room. And we're going to have a look in the hall as well. And have a little peep at the other cabinet. And you can see the, the differences of what the kits are, etc, etc. So I thought we'd do something a bit different really. A bit of fun. Um... I suggest you all pour yourselves a drink. Uh, this video won't be very long in fairness, but um, I, I say I'll do a before and after, and the after will be quite a short one. But I, I thought I'd do the intro for Christmas here. Wish everybody a great modelling Christmas. And I hope you all get some interesting models, perhaps from your nearest and dearest. And yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to hear from you about whether you have the same problem, because it is, it is a nightmare. In fact, I was um, talking in one of my recent videos uh, about stashes, which a lot of you, by the way, that was a very popular video indeed. I think it's got something like 15,000 views, quite a lot of views. Um, and people were talking about, you know, I mentioned my favourite uh, kit and the fact that uh, one or two of them, uh, as, it, as it's still in kit form, I haven't built them yet. Uh, so one of them, a particular favourite of mine, is the Mosquito, the Tamiya 132 Mosquito. And it hasn't been built because I haven't got the room, as you'll see in a second. Um, but I actually went to Telford, I was a bit disappointed this year, because I was actually looking specifically to see if I could find a cabinet, sorry, um, a display case that would be big enough to actually get this Mosquito in. It's going to be so big. And I could then maybe put it on a top somewhere, you know, I, I could then have it, I could build it, I could have it safely non dust it, I wouldn't have to dust it. Um, and I have got a couple, literally a couple of kits. I've got the Toyota GT86 sports car, which I showed last year. That's in a little uh, display case. So that never needs dusting. That doesn't enter into this uh, annual event that we're about to have here. So, yeah, it would be 
it would be interesting if I could actually get my hands on a proper display case that was the right size for something like that and also for the Corsair as well although I could fold the wings of the Corsair I might be able to squeeze it in somewhere so that may not be such a problem but you can understand the problem with some of these kits and uh, once you get talking about 24 scale Spitfires and things like that you're talking about taking up a lot of room and and let, don't even get me started on the Lancaster uh, from Border Models at 132 because that would just no no you need a separate house for that, don't you, really? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to zoom you back. Um, I will come around behind the camera and let you have a look at these kits. Um, a little sippy. And I'll take you on a little journey into my, my modelling cabinets that you probably haven't seen before, or many of you may not have seen, anyway. Hmm. So, let's have a go then. So, I'll come around behind you, and we'll see... Exactly, you can see exactly what the problem is. So I'll just release you, and off we go. Now then, now I've got them um, in this particular cabinet. I've got them in different sort of genres on different shelves. So we have the armor kits here at the top, and I'm going to try and zoom in a bit more for these. Now that we know that the the zoom doesn't like to get too close, so. I need to back off a little bit to give you the proper focus, he says. There we go. Yeah, I've got to be a good metre away, actually, to give you the full zoom effect. Here we go. In there now? Yes, I think we've got it. So this is my um, Normandy British Infantry uh, Patrol, which actually came with the um, Asuka or Tamiya Asuka uh, uh, Sherman Firefly, which you can see in the background, with what looks like the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry. Oops, perhaps less said about him the better, but it does look like him, doesn't it? Um, and then we've got our, our Jeep uh, with the GI, and he's talking to the British soldiers. He's obviously in Normandy and perhaps having a quick meeting to talk about where the German positions are and all that sort of stuff. So... Just struggling with the focus a little, aren't we? There we go. But yeah, they look quite nice, aren't they? Anyway, you can imagine, you can appreciate it. If you look very carefully now, I'll zoom back a little bit. You can actually see the layer of dust. Can you see it? Underneath the, uh, yeah, underneath the T-34. We can see this, this dust layer. So this is the problem. See it there? Mm, looks like snow almost. Almost looks like the Battle of the Bulls, doesn't it? <laughs> And this is a, that's a year, well, I was going to say, normally it's a year, but it's actually about six months accumulation of dust that you see in there. And so we, we need to tackle that, you know. And you, you see it there, can't you? Now, here's my tiger, Michael Vittman and his tiger. Um, tiger 222. And we have one or two characters here. I've talked about this before with um, with figures. Uh, some of these figures seem to take on a personality of their own. I'll give you some examples. So here we have the guy that's doing the... Um, he's picking up and loading the uh, the shells here. The ones that have got the uh, the yellow tips. And it looks like Mr Spock. He looks a little bit like Leonard Nimoy. Let me see if I can get a better angle. So you can fully appreciate this. He's got a look of Leonard Nimoy about him, hasn't he? Uh, and then we've got... Daniel Craig, now none other than James Bond himself. Now, I have to be frank and say that when I started making this kit, uh, I think it's the Normandy Panzer Aces from Dragon. Now this guy that's in the centre of the image now, that's uh, got his headphones in his hand, he looked incredibly like Daniel Craig as I was painting him. Now when I finished he looked slightly less like him. Um, maybe I just changed the textures of his skin a little bit inadvertently. But he looked like 007, he really did, genuinely. Very, very odd. And uh, and then there's this one here, who... Oops, get some focus, I might have a chance. This chap here, with the gun, the um, machine gun over his uh, STG-44 over his shoulder. Again, um, perhaps you're seeing it very blown up, so you're seeing it in a way that you wouldn't see it in real life. But he looks a bit like Clint Eastwood from... Uh, where Eagles Dare, it reminds me of the Clint Eastwood sort of uh, outfit, you know. And he's a little bit like him, there's something about him. It reminds me of the Clint Eastwood character. So we've got Clint Eastwood, we've got Mr Spock and we've got 007. 
and you can see there you actually got 007 there in the background slightly. Anyway, zoom back, enough of this. <laughs> We've also got uh, models of our family cats that we had that are sadly no longer with us, but uh, I did a model version of each one. Here we go. So that's our former cat Purdy. And then in the foreground, a little bit, if I can get it to focus. There we go. We've got, we've got no focus is what we've got. <laughs> there we are. This is another cat. We're really struggling with the focus, I'm sorry about that folks. The camera is a very good camera as you know, it gives a very clear high definition image but it does get confused in certain circumstances, has to be said. Yeah, we're really struggling with it, aren't we? I'm going to move right back. See if we can manage it. There we go. It's kind of got it, hasn't it? Not quite getting the full detail there. That's all. There we are. I think we've got it now. Yeah. So that's our former cat, Scampy. Uh, and I hope you can tell, because it's quite hard with this light. You can tell that we've got the detail of the colouring of the cat quite accurate to the real, the real little pet that we had, and uh, and it's also true of Purdy in the background. Anyway, obviously the camera's struggling a little bit with this, but we've got quite a complicated scene as you can see, um, where we've got these characters and we've got cats and. 007 and Spock and all the rest of it. Anyway, they're all going to have to come out. Every one of those is going to have to be removed and placing them back in the right places or thereabouts is a real nightmare. It really is difficult. There's a lot of work involved. Now, there is um, something I'm going to talk about in another, another separate video. There is a way around some of this problem where you can cheat your way or hack your way out of it. And it's this. If you go down a step onto the next shelf down, we have got Tamiya Spitfire, we've got Ravel's F-15E Strike Eagle, just come around this side. And we've got, of course, the Edouard Mirage III, the Israeli Air Force, the Six Day War. And in the background we've got the Tamiya Mustang 132. All lovely kits. But here, we're cheating, we're using a base. Um, now these bases are from a company called Coastal Kits. In the, made in the UK, in, in Blackpool in fact. Um, now strictly speaking, the one that the jets are on is actually an aircraft carrier, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> it's a carrier deck. Um, but it does, uh, it just lifts them and it, it gets rid of this dust problem where you don't really see the dust the same as you do on a clear piece of glass. So, we'll talk about that separately. Uh, I'll come back to that in another video coming very soon, the next few days probably. Uh, probably over Christmas, New Year time. That is a great way to get around this problem, uh, which I'm sure a lot of us suffer from. And then of course we have the, the racing cars, uh, we've got obviously Steve McQueen's, that's the, the latest kit I finished. Steve McQueen's Golf Porsche there, uh, which uh, was only finished a few weeks ago. And these are very glossy, so these, all, these do show up the dust of course, especially like the Lotus here, the... Uh, the John Player Special Lotus 79, that really shows it up very, very badly. So, you know, they have to be dusted and uh, they're going to, again, they've all got to come out. And then when we go down to the bottom, we've got all the Cold War stuff, the jets, Scorpion tank, etc. Now that's actually a mirror uh, rather than just glass it sits on. You can probably tell that the dust there is, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Let's see if we can get to focus. Pretty extreme dust, to be fair. That's a bit nasty. That's going to have to all come out. Everything's going to have to be dusted, and then the actual shells dusted, and then uh, a glass cleaner, glass polish will be used. So again, if you just look at that, and you can really see it there, can't you? Layers and layers of it. Now what we'll do is we'll just zoom back for a second, and I will just very quickly take you to see my other cabinet, which is here in the hall of the house, and. 
we have here, again, lots of dust. Look at the, the sort of halo of dust we've got here. Can you make that out? Look at it. That's quite a lot. Hmm. Yeah, you can see it there, can't you? It looks like it's snowed. So that, that, this really is 12 months accumulation, so this one's kind of worse, you can probably see that. So let's just zoom back. Yeah, you can see the, it's just a complete dusting, like there's been a light snowfall. So what we've got here, we've got the Tamiyar, uh, nearest one on the left here, Tamiyar Mark 1 Spitfire, we've got the uh, Tamiyar Stroker Teleri Mark 1 Hurricane, not such a great kit that one to be honest. The very nice Mosquito 148 from Tamiya. They're all 48. Apart from that uh, bow fighter in the background, she's 70 second. It's crept in. And that's the old Tamiya Spitfire, which is not a bad kit, I've got to say. It's quite, still quite a nice kit. And then the next level down, we have got a new kit here. Many of you won't have seen, and that's the V2 Vengeance Weapon Rocket, complete with its uh, little tow trailer and launching stand so that's quite uh quite a, that was actually built against the clock i built it in 48 hours the whole thing so that was done for a bit of a challenge you know back in november on the modeling forum that i'm involved on of course we've got the v1 as well in the foreground and then we've got the uh the me 163 comet the rocket plane it's valter rocket motor as well and the background we have got now, this is where it gets complicated in terms of this cleaning problem and job I've got to do. Look at all the pieces we have here, you know, you've got so many different elements. You've got little toolboxes and there's there's buckets and uh, gas canisters. Chap there that's doing a bit of uh, paint spraying, doing some winter camo I think. And you've got your officers. Uh, these figures are the ICM Luftwaffe, I think it's the mid-war Luftwaffe. Uh, airfield personnel and then you've got your uh, FW190, you've got a couple of Tamiya personnel with the bomb there and then again here we've got the checkpoint checkpoint Charlie and on the checkpoint we've got, this is again it's ICM see if we can get to focus yeah the light's not helping my focus here I don't think to be fair um, but you can see we've got We've got some good detail, but lots of little intricate figures. This chap's having a cigarette, look. Um, and they're all going to have to come out, they're all going to have to be polished. Every piece has got to come out, every piece has got to be polished. Uh, <laughs> this is quite a funny one, you can see this, this, these two here from the Tamiya set. He was actually looking at a map and he's dropped, <laughs> he's dropped his map. So that, that needs to be corrected anyway, so, so they need to come out. We've got our ME262, ME109E, and there's a chap here carrying a bomb very nonchalantly through the scene. And another chap here who's got his uh, toolkit out. And then below we've got um, we've got the uh, tank buster, some various tank busters. We've got the Typhoon from Hasegawa at that end. At this end we've got the Americans P47 Thunderbolt Razorback. And then we've got a couple of matchbox creeping in. We've got Tempest and a Hurricane 2C. And then we've got the whole gamut of matchbox figures here. Match little tiny figures, 76, 76th scale, I should say. Uh, and we've got all their little um, dioramas. Sadly, the Puma has no diorama, but Jason from Model Kit Stuff on YouTube has very kindly sent me the street scene, which I was missing, and I've actually just started to build that. So that'll be um, I'll, be, I'll be showing that in the next few weeks, probably as a finished article. Uh, you can see the lovely lovely little dioramas that we have that come with these kits. They really gives them a character that they wouldn't have otherwise. There's the little Humber armoured car. And the Comet. And the uh, anti-aircraft uh, M50 is it? The uh, Half track, American half track, and of course the Sherman Firefly on the bridge at the end. And then below there, we've got some items that are not actually kits, with with one exception. These are all bought pre-made uh, models uh, from people like Mini Champs and 
who's the other one? Um, uh, I forgot the name of the people that do these now, these uh, 18th scale ones. But that's at the end, and the, in the far corner there, we have a Porsche 928 from the 1980s. And that was my, f this is the oldest kit I have that I've still got from my sort of childhood. And yes, I actually built it about 81, 82, I think. And it's got a motor in it, so you can actually put batteries in it. It goes around and around in circles. <laughs> but uh, quite a nice kit, I have to say. And then uh, underneath we have got some jets, uh, sort of 70s jets uh, and some Battle of Britain stuff as well thrown in there. So we've got uh, American Corsair, which is the Matchbox one, which is unpainted. And then we've got a Matchbox Phantom, uh, a Ravel Lightning uh, Spitfire, which is from Tamiya. And we've got the uh, Airfix Red Arrow Folland Nat. And uh, 70 second scale Airfix Spitfire Mark 1, the hideous, <laughs> very challenging Buccaneer 48 scale old school Buccaneer from Airfix from the 90s, 94, I think he was from. And then we've got a couple of Harriers, we've got a Matchbox Harrier and the Hasegawa uh, version of the Harrier over there. So there we have it. So that's uh, yeah, that's a bit of a challenge. So there's a lot of dust in there. I can tell you, I can see lots and lots of layers of dust. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm gonna pop you down back as we were and zoom out a bit so I can have a drink. And uh, oops. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, yes, so there we are. Quite a lot of, quite a big job, a lot of dusting and cleaning I've got to get through. I'm not looking forward to it at all. Mm -hmm. It's a pity you can't sort of hire people to come in and do a specific cleaning job just on your models. Maybe not though. Uh, the last time I actually had somebody looking at my models, um, cleaning I should say, when I was, before I was married. Um, I used to do my own cleaning, um, but I, I got a job where I was doing a lot of travelling, so I had a cleaner. Oh, she was hopeless. She just used to break all the models all the time. They were constantly getting broken before I had a cabinet. So that wasn't much use to us, really, I'm afraid. So uh, there we go. Anyway, I think that's probably it for now. I think what I'll do is I'll bring you back when it's all done and dusted, and you can see the difference in how clean it all looks. Um, I suspect the arrangement will be of the models themselves, and probably the same. One thing you might have noticed, as you have been having a look at them, is just the fact that there's a, there is one or two spaces over my shoulder here, um, up above on the top shelf where the armour is. There is enough space there. I've got um, I've got a Jagd Panther, and I've got uh, pom, 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 the Achilles, uh, the uh, the M is it five M five Achilles. Uh, and M10 isn't it? Uh, the Achilles, the um, self-propelled tank destroyer that's got the uh, 17 pounder gun from the Shema Firefly. So it's almost like a, a Firefly without a top turret really isn't it? Uh, it has the turret but it doesn't have a roof on it, strangely. I still can't quite get my head around that but um, yeah, strange. One of those designs that was obviously just rushed through and it was actually very successful. But I could build that and I could put that in there with my Firefly and I could put my Yank Panther. So there's room, isn't there? I've still got some small room where I can get, get things in. But as you can see from the selection, I am really running out of space. I mean, uh, I've, I've started building the Sea Harry, the 48 Sea Harry from the Falklands War. Not sure where that's going to go, to be perfectly honest with you. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to find somewhere for that. Um, but maybe it could go in here, maybe with the sort of 1970s, 1980s stuff here. Uh, and it would go very well with the Scorpion tank, wouldn't it? They'd, they'd go together very nicely. I think it's difficult, you know, if you feel that you've got kits that you're really attached to, how do you decide which ones to keep, which ones to let go and move on, you know, when you've only got limited space to, to actually show them? I mean, again, I managed to get the Gulf portion, that was okay, so I shoehorned that in there without too much fuss. And it looks okay, um, but apart from these tanks, I'm, then I'm really running for aircraft. I'm running out of space for sure. 
So how do you get around that then? Do you just move on your kids? Do you give them to people? Or do you bin them? Or do you just put them in the loft? Or what do you do? That's, I've, <clears throat> I've sort of gradually got rid of the ones I don't think are absolutely that brilliant. But even the ones I've got here that are not the greatest, you know, I mean, I've got the Vulcan and I've got the uh, TSR2. And they're not the most beautiful sort of weathering jobs or anything, but I do think I've made a decent job of them. And I, I'm a bit loath to get rid of them, really. Um, no good reason to do it, to be quite honest. So, anyway, that's where we're at. So, I'm going to go away now. I've got the gloves on ready, so I'm going to take my jacket off. I'm going to get dusty and take them out one by one and get cracking, you know. Um, I'll probably do this one first, and then I'll do the whole one... Uh, another day, perhaps when my wife's at work or something, and uh, so there's no traffic, you know, in the hall. <laughs> anyway, in the meantime, um, I did mention that we we're going to talk about the, the uh, cigar, so I'll just mention this before I disappear. We've got a Sharatan here, uh, my favourite brand, and then we've got a Sharatan, this is a, is it a Robusto? I think it's the Robusto. Um, so we've got quite a nice cigar there for Christmas, which I'll probably have, I don't know, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. When I usually go, out, I go outside, I don't smoke in the house. Because uh, I'm really a non-smoker, we've talked about this before, I'm just special occasions, you know. But if it's a nice day, I might just go out and sit in the garden, or if I go for a walk or something, I might take that with me and light up, you know. That, that looks like a really nice one, I think. It's going to be quite a, an enjoyable experience. Uh, next time you see me, I'll probably be drinking something slightly more sophisticated than Pierce Porter. <laughs> it just, just reminded me about the, you know, the days when I used to drink this. I think it was the 80s, basically, when I had flares and hairs, yeah? Mmm. <laughs> Those were the days, and it was about one ninety nine a bottle as well. Anyway, enough from me for now. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found it interesting to see something different instead of me just sitting in my usual spot. We are going to be having a couple of reviews. I think we've got three reviews to do over the Christmas period. Um, if I get any more kits as gifts, there may be more reviews. Who knows? But we've got a couple to do. And I want to talk about bases and dioramas. So I think there's a few interesting things you might enjoy tuning in for. But that's it for now. Thanks very much for joining me. Hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Don't drink too much, don't eat too much, don't do too much modelling, try and relax and uh, maybe when you've had enough of, you know, the films and the family and the food and the, uh, the drinking etc, maybe then we all get back to our modelling and uh, we can settle down to it. In the meantime, thanks for joining me, I hope to see you all very very soon, don't forget to tune in for part two of this and uh, those other videos as I mentioned that are coming up in the next few days, I think you find them quite interesting uh, and again, I'm trying to do some, one or two things slightly differently just for the sake of variety. Uh, as I've not been on the air for a while, I thought I'd uh, come back and do things in a refreshed way, just for a change really, and I look forward to you joining me then. So thanks very much for your time, and I hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, Merry Christmas, thanks a lot, and bye for now. <laughs>